Hello, hello, Grace Church. Once again, we are so glad that you're able to join us this morning. Now, for the first order of service, let's prepare our hearts and mind and let's rise to our feet and welcome the worship team. Cause I know that you love me Your love 
But he brought me in all oh, his love for me Oh, his love for me Oh, the sun sets free Oh, it's free dear I'm a child of God Yes, I am Free at last he has
bless you and keep you make his face shine upon you be gracious to you the lord turn his face toward you and give you peace the lord bless you and keep you make his face shine upon you be gracious to you the lord turn
his face shine upon me Be gracious to you The Lord turn his face toward you And give you peace Welcome back Grace Church. My name is Arul and I will be giving you all the announcements for this morning. The first announcement is Kids Alive via Zoom every Sunday at 12 p.m. If you'd like your children to join this session, please contact Pastor Joanna or the other children's church teachers. Please join us every Tuesday at 8 p.m. for Bible study led by our past- Pastor David Ramaya. And this session will be via Zoom. For youths, 316 Youth Movement is held every Saturday at 2 p.m. Please contact Pastor Stefan for more details. Tithing and giving offering to Kingdom of God is a form of worship. So Grace Church, thank you so much for your continuous support and faithfulness by giving to the church. For those who would like to start giving, please take down the bank account details on the screen right now. And please give and be blessed. Now, for the most important and a new announcement for this week. Guess what, Grace Church? Be able to meet physically again after a long time this week. We will be having a prayer meeting this Thursday, 4th of March, from 8.30 to 9.30 p.m. However, remember, due to the government's SOP, only a maximum of 30 people are allowed for this session. So it's going to be held on a first-come, first-served basis. So you need to pre-register with Pastor Joanna for this session. Now, if you don't make the cut for this session, don't worry. You will be given priority for the next session next week. Now it's time to get spiritual food from a speaker for today. Let's welcome Pastor Jonathan. Good morning. We're so happy to be here with you today. I'm so happy to bring the word this morning. I hope you're ready to receive. I hope God will speak to you this morning. I hope your hearts are open and I hope you'll be blessed today. Amen. I'm going to talk to you about no favorites. No favorites. We like to think about favoritism as something that is harmless. When you come home from work and one of your kids run up to you and they hug you and they kiss you and that one becomes your favorite. And then the kid grows up, the second one comes and when you come home from work, they hug you and they kiss you. Then that one becomes your favorite. You know, I got three girls and all of them took turns to become my favorite. But now, nowadays, when I come home, a person doesn't greet me. My dog greets me. My dog is so excited, so happy. He jumps. He howls. He's so happy to see me. He's the only one who will make noise. But maybe it's my fault. Lah, because the past two years, whenever I came home and then my kids would come to me and I'll say, don't touch me. Nobody touch me. Let me shower first because coronavirus. So stupid coronavirus has ruined <laughs> my relationship with my daughters. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> But maybe it's my fault, yeah? (laughs) So, anyway, about favoritism. Sometimes we think there's nothing wrong with favoritism, you know? Because different child needs uh, different kind of attention, different kind of love, different kind of care, you know? But it it actually has a damaging effect on the family. Favoritism has a damaging effect. Papa's got his own favorite. Mommy's got her own favorite. And then the other one, nobody's favorite, you know? So it becomes a dysfunctional family. But what does God say about favoritism? Today's text is from Acts 10. This is Peter, is talking. Acts 10, 34, 36. Peter fairly exploded with his good news. It's God's own truth. Nothing could be plainer. God plays no favorites. It makes no difference who you are or where you're from. If you want God and are ready to do as he says, the door is open. The message he sent to the children of Israel that through Jesus Christ, everything is being put together again. Well, he's doing it everywhere among everyone. Amen. God plays no favorites. Now, the background of the text is Peter was talking about how salvation is for everyone. 
every nation, telling them about how Jesus died and uh, and he rose from the uh, rose from the dead three days later. And after that, he spent time with Peter. He ate with them, drank with them. He was right there with them in the flesh. It wasn't like some spirit or some ghost thing. Jesus was flesh again when he when he when he, when he was risen from the dead, you know. And while, while Peter was talking about this, how Jesus came, and anyone who believes, you will receive forgiveness of sin. While Peter was talking about all this. Boom! The Holy Spirit fell in that place and everybody broke out in tongues. They started praising God, started magnifying God, started worshipping God right there and there. Who would love to be in a meeting setting like that? Imagine I'm talking in church and I'm talking halfway and suddenly, boom! The Holy Spirit comes. I cannot finish the message, cannot talk. You know, the Holy Spirit comes in. Jonathan, sit down. I'm taking over from here. Oh, I would love that so much. But how did it all start? It started with Peter telling them about how God plays no favourites. Nothing can be plainer. The door is open. That is the message, church. That anyone and everyone is qualified. No one is too far from the grace of God. God plays no favorites. In Genesis 25 to 28, it's a story about Isaac and Rebekah. They had two sons, okay? Esau and Jacob. The problem is Esau was the father's favorite and Jacob was the mommy's favorite. Because of that, they became a dysfunctional family. And the mom helped her favorite, Jacob, to cheat the father and cheat the brother. And then Jacob had to run away because he was so scared Esau was going to kill him. You see, all this thing carried down. And then it carries down to the next generation when Jacob gets his own family. And he has a son. His son's name is Joseph. And he makes a colorful, expensive coat only for Joseph. And the Bible says, he said, he loved him more than all of his other children. He didn't even try to hide his favoritism. Huh? He wasn't even, he didn't even feel guilty and like, I shouldn't show so much love to this one and the others jealous. He don't care. Open, open. Oh, this is my favorite son. This is a colorful quote for you. Expensive one. You know, he's so proud of his son. Now, how many of you were favorites in your family? Don't look at your father. Don't look at your mother. <laughs> don't. How would you give your favorites? Well, for me, my family, I wasn't anyone's favorite, lah, you know. But my sisters, ah, that one, a different story. Let's not talk about that today. Until today, they're fighting for the favorite title. Oh, snap. <laughs> my wife is with me here today in the studio. At least I got audience of one here. Thank you, man. But yeah. But in school, when I was standard three, nine years old, okay, I was my teacher's favorite. I was teacher's pet, teacher's favorite. And nothing I could do would be wrong. She loved me so much. The whole class got punished. Jonathan never get punished. The whole class cannot scolding. Jonathan, you, you stand there. Serious. It was like that. I was the teacher's pet. I don't know why she liked me so much. It was so funny until one time I got an award for best handwriting. Best handwriting, you know, me. My handwriting is horrible. Okay? Until today... It's horrible. About a few weeks ago, I was taking notes and I was doing some studies. I was taking notes and then I, I, I reread my notes and I could not understand what I wrote. Okay, I spent half an hour trying to trace back what was my mind during the time I was writing that, what was the book I was reading. <laughs> half an hour wasted because of bad handwriting. But when I was standard three, oh, I win a what for nice handwriting. Why? Because I was a favorite. You see, so when you're a favorite, you tend to get away with things that you don't normally get away with, you know. You also tend to do better. You tend to think that you're better when you're not really better. It gives you the confidence. It gives you the, the wow, I can do anything kind of feeling, you know, when you are a favorite. But when you're not a favorite, when the teacher doesn't like you, uh, some of you know what I'm, talk what I'm talking about, right? When the teacher doesn't like you, constantly picks on you, puts you down in front of your class, what happens? You tend to do badly in school, or at least for that particular subject. Why? Am I right? Am I right or not? Because you feel out of place. You feel you got no confidence. You feel like you're not good enough. And some people carry that into their adulthood, into other areas of your life. Always trying to prove something. You met people like that, they're always trying to prove something. You know, because they are insecure. Maybe their parents did that to them, not the teacher. Maybe their parents picked on them. This brother is better than you. This sister is better than you. We don't know how with their upbringing, what happened in their home. You know, and they bring it with them to their adulthood. I had an arts teacher who tore my art piece in front of the whole class. 
two hours I spent drawing and painting and doing my best. He took it in front of the whole class and Jonathan, what rubbish is this? He tears it. Only mine got torn, you know? <laughs> so it's not a nice feeling, you know, but I forgive him. Huh? I forgive him. But, <laughs> but sometimes when he comes back, I still look angry, lah, but I forgive him. So sometimes we look at people and we think, wow, God must love them more than me. They look like they got everything put together, you know. They're so happy. Their life so perfect. They're so handsome, so beautiful, so successful. Their family is all so nice. Then we wonder, you know, does God have favorites? Maybe he loves Pastor Stephen more than me. You know, maybe because Pastor Stephen always fasting and praying. I'm always feasting and playing. <laughs> maybe they love Auntie Betty more than me. Auntie Betty is a prayer warrior, but I'm a prayer warrior, <laughs> you know. But the word says God plays no favorites. Amen. Take comfort in that. Before David became king, when he was a shepherd boy, and Samuel the prophet came to the house to anoint the next king of Israel, he came to the house of Jesse, David's dad, and he said, bring out all your sons. God has chosen one of them to be the next king. So he brings out all his sons except David. And Samuel goes through one by one by one, not this, not this, not this, not this. He lined them all up and then he said, is there any other sons? He said, oh, there's one more, one more guy in the field. You know, what does that mean? That means Jesse favored all his other sons more than David. He didn't even consider David to be king. He must have thought that guy cannot love. This look at, take my, take my eldest son is tall, he's mighty, you know, he's powerful, he's a soldier, he can do all these things, he's strong. Why, why David? David cannot even be my king. How is he going to be the king of Israel? That guy is playing harp, he's sitting in the field, he's writing songs, musician, writing poems, lembek fella, ruddy cheeks, the Bible says, you know. That's how the father thought of him, you know. But the Chinese have this saying, you know, he no see me up. <laughs> no see me up. So Jesse, no see me up for David, you know, he no see David up. So sometimes people no see you up, it's okay. It's okay, people don't see you up because God sees you up, <laughs> So David never let his father's or anyone's opinions about him stop him from fulfilling his destiny, his purpose. He kept being his best, doing his best. Doesn't matter what you say. I know what God said about me. God said, one day I'm going to be king. And that never affected him, what people thought of him. And David became one of the greatest kings in Israel. If you go there you, to the city of David, you can actually go and visit his tomb. It's still there. You know, one of the greatest kings Israel ever had, you know. When I was standard 5, 11 years old, okay, my teacher asked me, Jonathan, what did your parents say about your results? I said, they said I can do better, lah. not good, my results are not good. Then the teacher said, Jonathan, you should tell them. For some people, that's the best they can do, lah. they shouldn't expect so much from you, you know. They keep expecting you to do, but this is the best you can do already, you just tell them like that, nee. They cannot expect so much from you. So I went home that day during dinner, sitting down, eating, um, and I told my parents, my teacher said, you all shouldn't expect so much from me. <laughs> Maybe that's the best I can do. This is the best result I can bring. This is the best I can do. Don't, don't expect so much. My parents, I never forget what they said. They said, what? <laughs> what? 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 <laughs> no, you are intelligent. <laughs> You are the mixed child, you're Chindian, you know, your father is Indian, your mother is Chinese. We read an article that means uh, mixed children are smart. You are smart, you are intelligent, and your mother is a teacher. You definitely can do better than this. That's why we cannot accept your results. We know you can do better than this. You know, my parents said that, and the next year was UPSR, and uh, I did well, I got A for everything. Did I suddenly become smarter? <laughs> did I suddenly become more clever? No, I don't. I don't think so. It's because of the confidence my mom and my dad spoke over my life. They refuse to accept that I'm mediocre. They refuse to accept that's the best I can be. They refuse to accept uh, that, that, that poor results. They say, no, you can do better. We know you can do better, you know. So they planted a new thought in my 11-year-old mind that this is not the best I can do. I can do better, you know. That's why sometimes we cannot accept it. We cannot accept what people have said over our lives. You have listened and you have subscribed to thoughts and opinions that people have spoken over your life over the years. Who said you cannot? Who said you're not smart enough? 
Who said you're not meant to succeed? Who said you're not meant to take your whole family to the next level of breakthrough? Who said it? You know, it's time to break it. The word says you are fearfully and wonderfully made. He specifically designed you and equipped you for your purpose. He makes no mistakes. Amen. Amen. Now, if God has put a dream in your heart, He knows how to bring it to pass. If you allow Him. I've heard people say, and I, I, I've also been guilty of this. I said, uh, you know, if God gave you a dream, He will surely bring it to pass. Though it is, it will surely happen. It will surely come to pass. But as I mature in the Lord, as I grow, I realize it will surely happen if you obey. If you continue to follow Him, walk in His way. Because God is a gentleman. He will not force His plan over your life. He gives us all free will. So I can't tell you that it will surely come to pass, but I can tell you if you choose to walk with Him, you choose to obey Him, you choose to follow Him, then it will surely happen. Your dreams, the desires of your heart. You know, it all comes when you learn to obey, when you learn to trust in Him, when you learn to delight yourself in the Lord. The word says, delight yourself in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. Amen. So if you feel like you're in a, at a disadvantage, like David, you're overlooked. People count you out. Don't sweat it. He can take your disadvantage and make it a blessing. He can use every part of your life, your success, your failures, your mistakes, your disappointments, your hurts. He can use it all. Nothing is wasted. 1 Corinthians one twenty seven says, But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. He can take your disadvantage and make it something good for you. Amen. Nita, my younger sister, when she was a kid, she was the only one in the family who, who couldn't sing. <laughs> she couldn't sing very well. Right? She could carry a tune, but her voice, not so nice. Like, not so nice that sometimes we would tell her, Nita, I think you better stick to whistling. <laughs> Okay, that was her as a, as a kid, annoying. So she decided she wanted to sing well. What she would do is she would listen to Mariah Carey every day. Listen to Mariah Carey, rewind, pause, practice, play. Rewind, pause, practice, play. Practice and practice and practice every day. Mariah Carey, practice, she would practice the runs and she would get better and better every day. And then she became the best singer in our family. Not only that, later she got signed up with a recording label. What happened? She pursued her dreams. It was a dream that she would sing. And God is greater than Mariah Carey. Amen. <laughs> and I, I probably don't need to say this, but when she was small, also she used to put water balloons in her, in her baju and say, look at me, I'm Mariah Carey. <laughs> Sorry, Dita, I had to. And then she went from Mariah Carey to Jim Carey. She said Ace Ventura is the most handsome man ever for her. But I probably shouldn't tell people about that now. Huh? But anyway... <laughs> He can take your disadvantage and make it a blessing for you. Like Nita who couldn't sing and become a recording artist. Sign up with a recording label. How? God can do it for her. God can do it for some of you. Okay? Now, the door is open for you. The door is open for you. Second point. The word says it makes no difference who you are or where you're from. If you want God and are ready to do as he says, the door is open. That's the key right there. If you want God and are ready to do as he says, the door is open. you got to want him, desire him, put him first in your life, obey his word. You cannot say, I love you, Lord, and then you're cheating on your wife. I love you, Lord, but you're cheating in your company, in your expenses. You're, you're, it doesn't tell you, you know, if you love me, obey my commands. Love one another. Forgive. Honor your parents. It's simple. Don't complicate things. It's so simple. You know, he said, learn from me. Jesus says, learn from me. I'm gentle. I'm humble in spirit. He's not arrogant, full of ego, full of pride, holier than thou. I know everything. All of you are stupid. No, Jesus is not like that. Anyone, anywhere could talk to him. Rich people, poor people prostitutes, sinners, tax collectors, beggars, sick, blind. Anybody can talk to him. Be like me, Jesus says. Do as he says and the door is always open. Now the door 
is always open. Church, that means 24-7. He is available to us. The word says he never sleeps. He never slumbers. He's not like the telco line. Press 1 for English. Press 2 for Chinese. Please hold for operators. All our operators are busy. No. He's there for you 24-7. Always open for business. Are you walking into his office then? Walking into his presence. Bringing your requests. Bringing your troubles. We should bring our praise also to him. When we come into his office, bring our praise, bring our thanksgiving. You know, his office is always open. Why not access it? Why not access him? Come into his presence. You've got access to the highest power in the universe. It's him. When Jesus died on the cross and the veil was torn, it was done. No more separation. His door was open to anyone, to everyone everywhere. We have a direct access. I watched an interview about uh, some professional basketball players, how they first got signed up and uh, they made a lot of money. Okay, They got sponsorships, they got a new contract. It can even go up to like $100 million. So people will call them up, all their friends, their relatives will call them up asking for a handout. And uh, this is how one of them said he managed it. He said, he told his, 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 his relatives, look, I want to help you but come to me with a plan. Tell me. Come to me with a business plan. Come to me with a plan and I'll invest. I'll help you. I'll invest. And he said, nobody came to him with a plan. They all just wanted a handout. Nobody came with a plan and said, I will do this with the money. I will do that. Nothing. You know? So, are we like that when we come to God without a plan? We just, I have no plan. Nothing. Just, Lord, I'm coming to you like you are a rich relative who just signed up in the NBA. Lord, I'm poor, you are rich now. Write me a big check and you will solve all my problems. You know? Or you come to the Lord, Lord, I want a wife. Lord, I want a husband. Lord, I want a new business partner. Lord, the sugar app, not working. I cannot find husband, I cannot find wife. <laughs> sugar book. But we come to him without a plan. But And sometimes, sometimes, God is like that basketball player. Come to me. I want to help you. I want to invest. I'm not interested in just giving you a, a handout. I want to turn your life around. I want to make you a blessing. I want to make you a real blessing. I want to bless you, but you've got to come to me in a plan. But sometimes God is a few steps better than those basketball players because sometimes we don't have a plan and we go to God, God, I have no plan. I'm trusting in your plan and he gives you a better plan for your life. You know? Some, sometimes he looks at you and he says, okay, I see your plan. It's okay. I got a better plan. Your plan, your desire is just to make it through the year. But his plan is to make this your best year. Your plan is to reconcile with a loved one. Hopefully they will come back. But his plan is to bless your relationship to the next level. You know, you just want to break even, but he wants to bless you this year. Make your late, latter days greater than your former days. His plan is always better than our plan. To make you a blessing. Next level. You, your plan is just to overcome your sickness. But his plan is to give you divine help. And it's okay sometimes to come, with, come to him without a plan. As long as you come to him. When my dad came to God, he didn't have a plan. He had nothing. No money. No education. He had drugs. He had the wrong types of friends. Messed up. Right? His whole life was a mess. And he comes to God. He didn't have a plan. But God gives him a new plan. Yeah? God gave my dad a new plan. He become a preacher, break the poverty thing, preach all around the world, minister to ministers. So blessed. And look, fast forward to 2021. We are all here part of his church, being blessed under his ministry by his, the grace that God has given him. I can stand here today because of the grace that God has given my dad. The man without a plan, who trusted God and followed God's plan. So come to him. Come to him with the desire to please him. Lord, my plan is to please you. My plan is to live a life that pleases you. My plan is that me and my household will be safe. My plan is that my children will be mighty in the land. That's what your word says. You know, how, how, how we, we talk to him by opening our heart, expressing ourselves to him, and then we watch how he will respond back to us. 
Don't treat God like a genie. Don't treat God like an NBA player. Treat him knowing that he cares for you, knowing he will provide, knowing that he's on your side, knowing that he wants you to win. Amen? I talked about King David earlier, about how he was anointed in front of his dad, but it wasn't immediate. He, yeah? He was anointed by his dad. He was anointed, I'm anointed in front of his dad. And um, it wasn't an immediate process. He still went back to the sheep. He took care of the sheep. He then he had to fight a lion. He had to fight a bear. He had to fight Goliath. He had to serve in the palace. And then Saul almost tried to kill him with a flying spear while he's playing the harp. He went through all these things before he became a king. It was a journey before he became a king. It was a training process. It was a conditioning process that he had to go through before he became a king and a great king. Now, Joseph, Jacob's favorite, also went through a very, very difficult process. He was thrown in a pit, sold as a slave, worked as a slave, promoted to manager, and then gets framed for rape, thrown into prison, and then gets promoted to prison manager. And then he interprets some dreams and he thought, that's it, he's going to get out of prison. But they forgot about him for two years. And then overnight, he becomes prime minister. What was that? Another long process, another training process, another conditioning process. Why does God allow us to go through these kind of things? So that when the time comes, the set time comes, we will be ready. We will be ready. When you ask David as he was a 15-year-old boy to be king, he wasn't ready. When you ask Joseph, the, 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 the favorite son in the house to be a prime minister of Egypt, he wasn't ready. But the process that he went through conditioned him to learn to trust God in difficult times, make him learn how to be a manager, how to be a good steward, until he be can become the prime minister of Egypt, until David can become the king of Israel. So God has a great plan for you. And sometimes you're waiting in that, in that training season, in the conditioning season, and you're like, God, it's taking so long. But God says, I love you so much, I cannot allow you to fail. I want you to do well. That's why you need to go through the process. It's almost like Karate Kid, wax on, wax off, Mr. Miyagi. Go through the process. Why is this trading so important? Do you know that 70% of people who strike lottery, doesn't matter, hundreds of millions or whatever, 70% of them who strike the lottery, within three to five years, they become bankrupt. Bankrupt, huh? they, don't, they don't even become where they started. They were better <laughs> before striking like lottery. They become bankrupts. Why? Because it was a shortcut. They didn't earn the money. They didn't go through the process. They don't know how to handle the success. They don't know how to handle the money. You know, so sometimes God protects us from that. He brings you through a process because of the set times that He has for you. When the time is right, when you are ready, the right people will come into your life. Amen? When you are ready for the breakthrough, are you going to trust Him? Are you going to be like David, like Joseph? No matter what, keep putting God first. Never let the testimony fall. Or oh, are we going to be like people who called to the genie and said, make my wish come true. You didn't answer my prayer, God. You didn't answer me. I'm not going to talk to you. I'm angry. I'm going to find my own way. Then we give up on God's plan for our life. Where are we, where are we in this thing? Are we going to be like David, like Joseph, who kept putting God first? No matter how difficult it is, I know your call over my life. I know you will make the desires of my heart come true. Like Job says, though he slays me, yet I will praise him. Amen. The trust must always be there that He is good. Point number three, He's doing it everywhere among everyone. Will you be counted today, folks, as among everyone? I want to be a part of this plan, Lord. You know, today, if you have not accepted Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, today is the day. The door is open for you. Don't wait any longer. You know, my dad always says that if God, he says this sometimes when he preaches, he says, if uh, God stopped blessing me right now, he'll be total, totally fine with it because he has blessed me so much. You know, my dad says this a few times. I'll be so happy if God stopped the blessing right now because he has blessed me beyond my imagination, blessed me so much. I'm going to be honest. I love my dad. I respect him. But every time he says that, I cringe. I'm like, no, not yet, not yet. Don't say that. Still a long way to go. So much more blessing in store for your children and your children and your children. And we sing the song, The Blessing. 
a thousand generations. Don't stop it. It doesn't stop with you. It goes on and on and on. Yes, we're thankful for what He has done. Yes, we're so grateful for what He has brought us through. But there's more. You haven't seen nothing yet. You know, to a thousand generations, more revelations to come, more insights of the Word, more people to meet more people to bring breakthrough into their lives, more nations to touch, people to bless. We're supposed to bring them the message. The message is simple. The door is open. Amen. The door is open. And if the door is open, I want to access it. I want to access it in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, at night, while I'm driving, while I'm at the gym. I want to keep accessing His door. Keep going into His presence. Keep bringing my request before Him. If it's not a request, I bring my praise before Him. If it's not a praise, I bring my disappointment before Him, my hurts before Him. I want to access His open door. And it's open for everyone, everywhere, like the Word says. Just before we end today, I want to give you an opportunity to invite Jesus into your life. Why don't you just pray this with me? Repeat after me. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, Please forgive me of my sins. I confess that you are God. Come into my life and please be my Lord and Savior. Amen. Now I pray that the Holy Spirit will continue to minister to you, continue to speak to you even after this, in this entire week. And if you prayed that prayer, speak to somebody who invited you to this meeting, who shared with you this message. Speak to them. We want to hear your testimonies. Get in touch with us. Get in touch with us on social media. It's all down here. Hopefully, they'll put it up. It's all down here. And if you've been blessed by the Word today, you've been blessed by our ministry, go ahead and share this message. Share our messages with somebody. You can never tell how we can touch somebody's life, how you can be an instrument to touching somebody's life, letting them know that anyone and everywhere has access to this open door. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you again. Thank you so much, Jonathan, for this word. And church, isn't it awesome to know that God's doors are always open for us, that we can come however we are, whenever we want to. God is just waiting for us. And I want to encourage you to take this word and run with it, that you will go to God and find him because we know that he is there waiting for us, the door is open for you to come now that was an encouraging word why don't we just close this service in prayer come on let's rise to our feet father we thank you for to this morning we thank you that you are an awesome god who is interested in us and i ask father god that you will take each and everyone who's coming to your throne right now that you will bless them abundantly that you will show them that they are loved that they are welcomed that your door is always open for them and i ask that the prayer that they bring before you will avail much oh god that you will work in their lives profoundly oh god change us from the inside out and we thank you for this morning, for your word that came so powerfully to, into our life. Let it change us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now let's receive the blessing this morning. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace in all your homes. Now, uh, church, it was so good to see you on a Sunday morning. You know what? Have an awesome week ahead. Please remember, we have a prayer meeting on Thursday night. So get in touch with Joanna because we have very limited spaces only. So have an awesome week, guys. We love you. Stay connected. Stay safe. And we love you. Bye.